Back in the days of tape editing, we had controllers for controlling our editing. And since computers have come around, we have been pretty much been stuck with the mouse and the keyboard. And there have been a few control surfaces out there. Uh, some small ones just give you like a jog shuttle wheel, but there's also ones that give you more functions. What I have here in the studio is a Loop Deck Plus. The Loop Deck Plus was designed for photo editing, but it also works with video editing. This is Alan Halfhill for a personal view. Let's take a look at it. To open up the box, just, and then there's another box inside the box. So we have to dump out this box like so. And this is the back of it. And again, it's in a box and you have to pull off this cover. And it's a pretty box. And then we have to open it up. And in here you will find a loop deck. It comes with a cord wrapped in a cardboard sleeve, and then the loop deck comes out. There's also some very limited instructions that are in here as well, as well as how to set it up online and a warranty card. So we'll put this stuff out of the way as well. And here it is, the loop deck with its USB cable. And then I will plug it in. Now that I've plugged the USB cable into my computer, now I'm ready to download the software for the loop deck. And here we are at the software site. And you go up to get started at loopdeck.com. And it says here, download for Mac, or you can do it for Windows. We will be doing it for Mac. And it says, do you want me to do it? And I say, yes, I do. And here it comes. Here comes the software now. Then we can go up to the top here. And you can see the software is right there. And then now here is this, the software. And it shows here that you want to install it. And you'll be taken through the installation process. And we will agree and go install. Installer would like me to install it. So I will use my finger on my computer. And now it's installing the files that we will need to use the loop deck. And you hear, at, give, give it access and control. And once we do this, we should be able to use our loop deck with our software. And here we go. It says, do you want to do some control in the system preferences? And I say, yes, I do. So I want to go here and unlock my system preferences. Again, I'm going to use my finger to do that. Now we'll, it should unlock it. And there it is, the Loop Deck app. OK, now we can, we can close that. And it says it's done, closed. And we'll keep it. I don't need to move it to the trash. And we'll close it. First, let's get rid of the installer. OK. Next thing you want to do is go to Applications. And once you've gone to Applications, we want to go down to Loop Deck. Double click on it. I don't see it installing, so why are you not installing? I was having trouble figuring out why the app was not working, but then I realized it is in the menu bar. And here it is. And you just go open Loop Deck is this. There is the Loop Deck. And this is the interface that you get. And down here is your preferences for the Loop Deck. You can actually load profiles, which we'll do in a moment. You're going to set up an account and analytics and all that sort of stuff. But the only thing we're really interested in here is the profile. This is the default that comes for Audition. You have to go up to here to go to Final Cut. One thing I don't like about this app is sometimes when I close it and open it back up, 
Final Cut does not show up. Audition does, but we'll see if Final Cut shows up. No audition showed up. So that you have to, if you want to program it, move it to Final Cut so you can see what the Final Cut programming is. And here, if I click here, this is how you program. You can see here I have right here, and that's on the saturation button, which is right here on the keyboard. And I can go over here and click on anything. And you can see it relates to Final Cut. Anything that I want to change it to. Right now I'm not going to do that. We're going to close the window. And we will look at the various controls that are on the loop deck. And as you saw, there's a custom control dial here and all sorts of buttons. These wheels you will not be using at all for Final Cut. They are de designed for color correction in another program. Same thing with these buttons here. The custom mode we will be using. All the other buttons are programmable. If we go back to the app, you'll see on here, if I click on it, this will show you all of what's available to be programmed. What you have here is black, highlights, shadows, and white, which are down here. Here's whites, blacks, shadows, and highlights. So actually now let's close this out. Now I'll boot up Final Cut and we will do a demonstration project. Go to our demonstration project. Here we are. It's coming up and there it is. I've already put this footage that we just shot earlier that you just watched. And I'm in the process of editing this together. As you can see, I can use the mouse if I go to the loop deck and turn this wheel, you can see it goes through here, but very quickly. And it's and they also have a wheel over here. Let me demonstrate this to you. Uh, if I turn this wheel here, it goes very, very, very slowly. And then that is something I like very much as to how slow this wheel goes. But the way this is set up right now, it's just not very effective using the control wheel as it just jumps around very, very quickly. And there are other things I cannot do in this mode. These are the defaults that are in the loop deck. And a little bit later, I'll show you how you customize it so you can make it more effective for Final Cut. So now we're going to actually show the things that actually do work in the defaults. One of the things that works in the defaults is if you go to the color corrector. See here, Final Cut color corrector. I can actually control the saturation of this shot that you see here on my screen. As you can see, it, and you can see the wheel moving up here, moving as I do that. Also, you can control the tint, and that is up, up, and that controls the tint on this knob that I'm using right now. You can go down to the vibrance and turn. That does not do it. Well, actually, it is doing it. The vibrance is more vibrant as I move the vibrance ar around. We can go to the highlights. You can see the highlights changing here and the shadows. I think I'll turn the saturation back down again because that was just a bit high. But it's nice being able to use wheels for color correction. And uh, the shadows are available as well as the highlights. There is no mid-tone button, as you can see, on this board anywhere. But all these other wheels work just fine. So we will close that up. I'm using my mouse to do it. And now with the defaults, you can still use your wheel, as you can see here, and you can use the other wheel. And this is moving at, base, at one frame at a time. And this is jumping from clip to clip, as you can see. It's just moving from clip to clip. But also, this wheel allows you to, over here, D1 allows you to change the size of your uh, timeline. You can also click on it and it will zoom it out. And you can zoom it back in, click on it, and it zooms out. And there are also other buttons as well. 
and that is different controls. The easiest way to find out what they are is to pull up the Loop Deck software like I'm doing right now and then click on them because that way you can get used to what they actually are. You have at L1 is add tracks, L2 is CTI, L3 is toggle track visibility and stuff like that. But again, I did not find what I was looking for because I was in audition and not Final Cut. So now you have to make sure that always says Final Cut here when you're programming. Now we're going to go back to that wheel and it says here nudge 10 frames. We don't want that wheel. We want this wheel which is the whites. And if we go down to whites you'll see here is the whites. Now if I type volume and we'll type it. Adjust volume. And see it now says volume. Hit close. Now if we close this window and go back to Final Cut, you'll see if I go to whites and on this clip I can now raise and lower the volume in my clip. So it's quite nice how you can program this. And it'll make it more interesting because I've created new presets for a lot of these buttons to work, I think, better with Final Cut. And now I'll show those to you. Wait for it to open and then go to here and go to Profiles and then go Import. And you'll see here's Alan's Final Cut. And we're going to import that into the loop deck and we'll close the loop deck because that's all I have to do. Now if I control the wheel, if we go to a final cut, you'll see now I can adjust it 10 frames at a time by turning this big wheel and I can change it with just one frame at a time with this little wheel next to it, D1. And that just makes it, I think, a lot easier to navigate through here. But I've added a bunch of other buttons as well. If you go over here, L1 brings up the color wheels or the inspector because there's L2 is the effects and, and the inspector. L3 is the color wheels and I can go back to L2 like so and I can go back to L1 and that gets rid of it. I made C3 the ability to go to my effects. I made C4 the ability to, to see my waveforms when I'm doing color correction. So if I'm going to do that, I bring up the color wheels as well. And then I can adjust my tint again. And the, as you can see, it's changing in the waveform as well as changing on the uh, wheels themselves. And I got vibrance as well. Uh, uh, saturation, here's the saturation. They, as I say, the tint, the temperature, but you also have your highlights. And we'll have to <laughs> scroll up so you can see it better when we go to the. And I added the mint tones in clarity. Mid tones I put into clarity since they're not on this keyboard. And the contrast adjusts the contrast. So that's the only one I programmed was clarity. And then the shadows, of course, we can adjust the shadows. Now, if I want to do more color correction, I hit custom mode up here at the top. And now you'll see that it's actually pulling the color around. It's actually adjusting the individual colors in the midtones, as you can see here. And it's doing it in the shadows as well over here and the tint up here. So these are th these are very, very handy to have. And this is all done from the keyboard. You can also get out of this mode by doing that and get out of that mode by doing that. These two buttons are designed for to get between the two. The viewer up at top and then the viewer the edit viewer down here. 
See, now I go up here, and now I can go up here. All on the keyboard, so I can make my cuts. The other thing I did is they had three and four as in and out. I made C1 and C2 since they're right next to the play button. So if I hit C2, that'll give me an out. And then if I go to the end of my timeline, I can hit C6 and that will delete. And you also have an undo up here. As you can see, C5 is an insert. So this is, a, for me, I think a much nicer way to use this this system. If you want to go faster, you actually use these keyboards. Control is play. Shift is rewind. And that stop. Find a loop deck. And here on the command key, it comes with a cord wrapped. And it is is play. But, but also it goes faster. That stops it again, the control key. You do have play controls. And to open up the box, it just, and then there's another box inside the box. So we have to, no, I'm just boxing the and just activate. There are more controls on this keyboard as well. Over here, you have a copy and paste, an undo and a redo. And those are very, very handy keys as well. And we can show you how to use that. And that is, I go to here and I can go copy, go to the end, like so, and then hit paste. If I don't like that, I can hit the undo button. Or if I do, I can hit the redo button. And of course, if I hit C6, it deletes it. And then the other interesting thing is you have all these keys are programmable on the top as well. Overall, I'm quite happy with this little purchase of this keyboard. I paid a little over $200 for it and it's available online and in retail stores. And I'm pretty impressed with it over overall. And it does give me a control surface for Final Cut. This is Alan Hatfield for Personal View. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you later.